scripture this morning is from John 20, verses 1 through 18. The empty tomb. <clears throat> Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where we have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He went over and looked in at the strips of linen laying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen laying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture what Jesus had what Jesus had to rise from the, that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were saying, staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she went over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where the Jesus' body had been, and one at the head and the other at the feet, foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have laid him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put, it, put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out, Aramaka, Rabbi, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, and said to my brothers, go and said to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. God's word to the people of word. You know, it, it makes perfect sense that uh, the black jelly bean represents sin because both black jelly beans and sin are an abomination before God. Now, half of you like that, half of you don't. I know some of you really love black jelly beans. That's okay. Uh, so welcome to all of you that are joining us for our celebration of Easter this year. Christ has risen. So when you think about the celebrations of Easter in your life, what is it that comes to mind for you? Do you have memories of getting dressed up and going to church? Do you think about the time that you spent with your loved ones? Uh, is there a gift that you received on Easter that sticks out in your mind? Uh, I know for me, I can remember one Easter when I was growing up very vividly. 
uh, I was probably around five, six years old, uh, and I had to wear a tie to church that Easter. Now, as much as I don't like wearing ties today, I hated it even more when I was a kid. See, I always felt like I was being choked whenever I had to wear one. And so I remember throwing a royal fit as my mother tried to get me to wear a tie. And I hope you parents out there this morning had an easier time getting your little ones uh, ready to come today than my mom and dad did that day with me. Um, but even as I think about how angry I was that year when I had to wear that tie to church, I can remember the next year as well. You see, the next year, my mom bought me a clip-on tie. Now, I like to think it was her way of helping me to find my place in the world, to help me do what was expected of me, and still allowing me to be myself. Now, whether it was out of love or it was out of remembrance of the frustration of the year before, I am not sure, but I like to think it was out of love. And I know that you have your own memories of Easter's past, and for a lot of you here today, you are working on creating those memories for your children and grandchildren this year. But what probably doesn't come to mind when you think about Easter is a feeling of searching. Oh, now maybe you have memories of searching for eggs, obviously, right? But that's not what I mean by searching here today. What I mean is you probably don't have memories of Easter that make you think about searching for your place in this world. Now, from the time that Adam and Eve left the garden, people have been searching for their place in the world. Where do I go? What should I do? Where do I belong? Who do I belong with? It's a constant problem that we all face at some point. Part of why it is so hard to be a teenager and to raise teenagers is because they are struggling mightily with that question, who am I and where do I belong? Now, as hard as that question is to answer in the first place, it is even harder when we believe we have found where we belong only to find out we were wrong. It can be crushing when we believe we have found the right place, the right job, the right person, and somehow we lose one or all of them. That feeling of loss of our place in the world is one that is beyond devastating. But as we look at the world today, and we see people searching for their place. As I considered this, I thought about all the commercials that you see on television and Really, commercials are just an appeal to people to convince them that the product that is being advertised will give them a sense of belonging in this world or a sense of their place in the world. There is a famous one that I'm sure you guys will all know once I describe it that says, try our coffee. If you try our coffee, then your brother, who is somewhere far away in another country, will magically show up at your house on Christmas morning and you all will be together again. Well, that is not an ad trying to sell you, telling you that their coffee is great. That is an ad trying to convince you that things will be right in the world if you try their coffee. You know, we see it with other things as well, right? You know, uh, buy, buy uh, a Subaru and you'll get an extra dog for free, right? And you'll have a dog in your world and a place in the world. You know, buy a, a Ford truck and you can be one of the cool people too. Well, okay, that one's right. Okay, that, that's an actual one that works. But um, we see this in our, in our different advertising out there. Um, but what are the dangers of a person struggling to find their place in the world? Well, it leads to all sorts of issues. Uh, it, when you're out there searching, it feels as if you have a hole that is inside of you. And it's as if you're missing some part of you that you are looking for in order to feel whole. Now, the result of feeling that incompleteness plays out in a lot of troubling ways. For many, it leads to a life of chasing after something that they think will make them feel complete. And that, in that chase, many turn to drugs or alcohol or other destructive forces. 
And this happens because at least in the tiny moments that they are intoxicated, they feel a sense of being where they belong or it numbs the feelings that they don't belong. Have you ever found yourself in a situation or in a place and wondering if you belonged where you were? So I have to tell you that when I started dating my wife, Carlin, some, I don't know, 57 odd years ago now, um, I had serious questions about where I would fit in with her family. Her grandfather, her father, her uncles, her cousins could fix or build just about anything you could imagine. And I can tie my shoes correctly on a good day. That is the basic extent of my own handiness. So I wondered, how am I going to fit in with those guys? Well, the good news is they didn't need me to be like them. They just needed me to love their granddaughter, their daughter, their niece, and their cousin. And if I did that the way that was expected, they would accept me just fine. And I'm grateful to have had each of them in my life and for how they've accepted me into their family. Now, you might be sitting there this morning and wondering, do I have the right day? It is Easter, right? Shouldn't the pastor be spending his time today only talking about Easter? Does the pastor know where he is? Can someone remind him where he belongs on Easter? Well, stay with me, folks. I believe we're going to tie it all together. At least I hope that we will tie it all together. See, on that first Easter... There must have been a profound sense and feeling of where do I belong now? The disciples and the other followers of Jesus must have been struggling with that question mightily. They had just devoted a good portion of their young lives and all their hearts to following someone that had been violently taken away from them just three short days earlier. Can you imagine the feelings of hopelessness they must have been experiencing? Can you just hear them saying to one another, where do we go now? What do we do now? And so when Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb and sees that it's empty and goes to Peter and to John to tell them, what has happened and Peter and John come running and look at the tomb and um, if you're wondering who the disciple that Jesus loved is that gets referenced that is John um, you may also notice that our scripture is taken from the book of John today um, and so that is how John refers to himself and that is perfectly fine so as uh, Peter and John run to the tomb they see that it's uh, uh, that Jesus is no longer there and what do they do when they see Jesus is no longer there? Well, we're told in John 20, verse 10, the disciples returned to their homes. They went back home. Now, I want you to imagine that the person you love most in this world has just passed away. And the first time that you go to visit their grave, the grave is open, the coffin is open, and their body is nowhere to be found. Do you simply say, well, I guess that's it, and go home? Wouldn't you have some questions that you needed answered by some people if that was what you saw? Well, not everyone went home, as we see in our scripture. See, Mary Magdalene sat at Jesus' tomb, weeping, on that first Easter. Mary, a woman that had been rejected by her own community, only to find her place in the world following Jesus Christ, stayed and wept. And when, peop when angels appeared to her, and when she saw someone standing there, she couldn't recognize Jesus at first in her grief, saying, and Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Mary 
wanted to know where Jesus was. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned to him and in Hebrew said, Rabboni, which means teacher. And I would love to scream that for emphasis for you because I imagine that's how Mary said it, right? Rabboni, it's you. I can't believe it. See, Mary found what she was looking for. Now that hopelessness that had been there a moment ago, can you imagine how it has been transformed into joy? The person that had defined her place in the world wasn't gone. He was right beside her. Now I want to pose this idea to you today, and it is this. What if we stopped defining our place in this world by the things that we do, by the places that we live? What if we defined it by who we follow? You see, I believe that all are searching for a place in this world, but I believe we can only find it when we follow the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. I firmly believe that the struggles that we have to try and find our place in this world can be helped, if not solved, by allowing Jesus into our lives. So have you found yourself struggling to find a community? Have you been asking, where do I belong? Do you wonder if people will accept you? Well, I will tell you that there is a community sitting around you today that will love you as one of their own. And they will do so because they are following the mandate that Jesus has given them to love others as Jesus has loved them. Just like my wife's family accepted me, though I was different, I can tell you this people of this church will accept you. All you have to do is to love Jesus and to love others. Are you struggling trying to find a sense of where you belong in uh, this world? Or uh, where, are you struggling to find a sense of being loved in this world? Well, I have good news for you. There is a king that loved you so much, he was willing to die for you. And not only that, but he came back for you after he conquered death. And he is waiting for you. Are you struggling to find your sense of purpose? What is it I should be doing with my life? There is a sense of purpose and a call upon your life that God has for you. See, we are all searching for a place in this world, but the truth is we already have a place in this world, and that is, a, that is as a child of God. Now, earlier I asked you if you had a gift that you can remember getting on Easter. Well, I hope you all know that you have already been given the greatest gift ever, and it was given to you on the first Easter. The greatest gift we have ever been given is the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is through his sacrifice and conquering of death that we have been given a place to belong and a purpose in this life. We have been given a chance to be part of his kingdom, and we have been given a chance to have our sins forgiven and to be reconciled to God. All of that is given to us simply for believing in him. You see, Jesus has already done the hard work. He has already suffered the pain of the cross and his death. All that requires, all that he requires of us is just to believe in him. So if you found yourself searching in this life for your place, I would sure love to talk to you more about how you can find it in Jesus Christ. And my challenge for you this week is this. Celebrate the risen Savior in all that you do. Amen.